and enjoy the grind, all right? Gotta enjoy the grind. Hey, listen, right now, day one starts, all right? Starts the rest of this of this team, all right? This 22 team, all right? Let's be known, man, as, as what? Founders, as finishers, all right? Technicians, all right? So we're gonna start slow, all right? Start simple, man, but listen, the greatness is in the details, all right? So let's lock in right here, man. Let's have some fun doing this, all right? And be great, all right? And let's dominate on three. Ready? One, two, three. Dominate. dominate. We're vlogging. It's great to be a Tiger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Feeling good. First mat drill. Everyone's been talking about how, how crazy it is. And I'm ready to go. No, let's go. Let's do it. Let's just work. Come on. Let's just work. Definitely got the butterflies going. Uh, I'll say that. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> no, sir. Not at all. How do you say no in Spanish? Uh, go with a good group. Um, because if not, uh, you'll get sent back. And if you get sent back, it'll ruin the rest of your match drill. So that's my best advice. Find people that you can count on and stick with them uh, because they won't mess you up. Good luck. I'm all in, baby. Here we go. It's time to get it. Let's work, baby. Let's work. Let's go, man. It's time to be great. That's what we do. First day of bats, man. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Go out here and compete. See what the leaders are. Fresh start. Matt, do it! Yeah, look, get it before and after the people yelling right now. Negative after this, all right? <laughs> it's personal. It's personal. Oh, nah, that time now. Feeling pretty good, man. I'm ready to get it started, you know. I'm tired of thinking about it. Time to put the work in, man. All in drills, you know, you, you, you got mat drills and you got all in drills. All in drills kind of has a, you know, a mind of his own. You know, that's where, you know, championships are founded. You know, from what I see, you know, there's uh, the aspect of, you know, just setting that foundation for what's to come throughout the course of the year. When we talk about setting the foundation from the course of the year, we're talking about the mental toughness that you're going to need. Then you're looking at the side where you got the discipline, attention to detail, you know, you got to have the right foot forward, left foot forward, stand off of the line, you know, making sure that you're doing the drill right. You know, all these things, you know, come into play when you're tired in the fourth quarter, you're tired in the third quarter, and you got to finish, you know, so a lot of attention to detail, you know, you're looking at things like the competitive aspect of it, you know, every drill that we have out there, is, you know, it's competitive, you know, those type of things you're going to need when you're, when you're competing for championships and things like that, and then we're looking at the aspect of, like, strain, you know, there's going to be a lot of strain when you're playing in the trenches, you know, and, and working his way out to the second and third level, so, you know, we got aspects of strain that's included into all in. You know you're doing all these type things, and, you know, they give you that confidence you need. And then when you have that confidence that you're going to need when you get on the field, when you know you can compete, that's what helps build that mental toughness. Looking at what I saw from this team, just first time really, you know, seeing all in drills and, and knowing what we're looking for in all in drills, I think we saw the championship foundation being established. You know, these guys came in and I'm seeing a lot of attention to detail. I'm seeing a lot of effort with technique. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, training with purpose, you know, intent. These guys are really approaching all in drills like it's a game day. Hoop drills, you bending, you, you, you're being fluid through your movements, you, you're doing ropes, you're shuffling. You're battling as you use your hands. You're doing uh, sled drills. You're pushing, you know, with intent. You know, intent to get to the quarterback. Intent to get through the line of scrimmage. Going all the way into the fourth quarter, you know, which brings the energy uh, to where we need to understand what that fourth quarter takes and making sure we dialed in, paying attention to detail. So I saw these guys, you know, just really, you know, attacking all in drills with purpose. You know, with, with I'm, what I'm seeing, I'm, I think that championship foundation was being established out there. Yeah, so the purple jerseys, uh, first of all, it's an honor you wear them. You want to wear them with pride. It's about leading your group, being the first in every drill, and just, you know, showing them how it's done. You got to go through. You got to do it right. You got to do it fast. You set the tone for the whole group. And, uh, you know, you get picked for a purple jersey, you got uh, to show out. Everyone's looking at you. You're the front of the group. So uh, it's important. You know, it's, uh, again, you got to wear it with pride. And, you know, time to show out when you're in that purple jersey. Hey guys, we're in the bistro doing a cooking demo today on how to roll a burrito. 
So rolling a burrito is really, really easy. There's a few steps you have to do and a few ingredients that you need, um, but nothing that you can't get from your local grocery store. So step number one is getting your ingredients. Um, today the guys have an option of rice, uh, rotisserie chicken, and then fajita vegetables. So they're gonna get those, mix it with some seasonings, and then put it into their tortilla. I said we gotta move quick. What do I bring? Whatever toppings you want. Oh. Come on, we gotta move quick. You're... It's cold. Come on. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, the on the bottom. Watch out. Yeah, I was like, why is this the first time we're Okay, okay, it's not. Okay. So you want to use a nice big tortilla, about 12 inches. Put the toppings right in the middle, and then you're going to fold it on the sides, fold it over again, and then keep rolling. Back up. Over. Yep, first up. Good. Good. Mush. Good. Turn. Good. Up and over. Yep, great. Seal. But, okay, yep, great. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Can you compare that to the size of your head? <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to seal it with a little bit of heat and a little bit of oil. So I want you to put your burrito um, carefully steam side down so that we can seal it. Yeah. Perfect. And then just put your hand on like this, a little bit of pressure. Don't put your hand in the pan. Yeah. Here, we're good apart. All right. If I had to give it a ranking out of 10, I'm gonna give it a 17. So, it sounds complicated. You guys see it happening all the time when you go out to your local restaurant, but it's really easy. You should try it. Bunch of figures. <laughs> And so I want y'all to continue to learn what Paul Journey is. I don't want Paul Journey to just be something people talk about, but they really don't know how to talk about. It. There's a holistic approach. And that first approach we take is personal growth, which is called what? Strike. 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 Personal growth. Strike. Matter of fact, I start calling freshmen naked tigers because I told you you got to earn your strike. You got to earn your strike. You got to earn growth. Growth is not given to you. You have to earn it. Either you earn it or you don't. Either you earn it or it passes you by. So when you think about strike, when you think about a tiger, you think about his stripes. And so our young men are in the development stages of their life. And guess what? they have to earn their stripes. Unfortunately, like the tiger, it didn't just come with them. They have to earn their stripes. And so personal growth is something that we earn. We're talking about your identity. We're talking about your manhood. We're talking about your core values. You're talking about your beliefs that govern your life. The past may influence the future, but your future is not reliant on the past. Um, as people, we get caught up in our past a lot. That's one thing we always refer back to. Um, students will constantly say, uh, you know, I've never been good at math or I've never been good at this. And it's like, well, you know that just because you weren't doesn't mean you can't be. Doesn't mean that the thing you're reaching for, this A in math, is, doesn't mean that it's not possible because you couldn't do it before. If you don't have identity, you'll spend the rest of your life hustling, grinding, earning, buying, trying to show off, trying to uh, um, make much of your achievements publicly, but you will never have peace in your heart. But listen to me, when you walk, when you live, when you grind with a deep sense of identity, I'm telling you, irrespective of what's swirling around you, irrespective of what's going on basically inside of you, you will walk forward with power and with purpose because when a man knows who they truly are, I'm telling you now, they become unstoppable. Hey, my name is Dan Leanne from Melbourne, Australia originally, but now I live in Anderson, South Carolina. Had the chance to talk to the young men today about being a five-star man, about knowing your identity, understanding your purpose, valuing a relationship, honoring women, uh, and ultimately walking with God. It was a great day today and uh, it blessed me. I think with the program, the strike program, one of the things that I really enjoy about it is that they are intentional about bringing diversity, bringing different viewpoints, making sure that their student athletes get exposed to all types of people with different experiences. You know, we had an early morning mat drill. Most of the guys may have come in tired, 
But I definitely felt a change in the room when Pastor Dan just started talking about finding your purpose. Um, and I kind of felt the change in the room that there's a little bit more of a hope because finding your purpose in life can be a hard thing to do. But just want to just thank Paul Journey. Paul Journey just gives us such great opportunities to um, grow as a man, become a better man. And, and that was the topic for today, just becoming a five-star man, which Dan did such a phenomenal job on. So I just want to thank um, Paul Journey, the Paul Journey staff of just helping us grow off the field. It is uh, probably the most important arm of Paul Journey. And so when we think about striped, we think about developing personal skills that serve us all our lives. What's up, John? Yeah. DJ. Hey, it's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. It's a lot of football. We brought a few. What's up, guys? We got our guy Dan Coulson from Big Game coming in today. He's going to sit down with us, sit down with our quarterbacks. We're going to actually get a custom fit ball that we're going to use this upcoming season. You know, there's there's many differences in laces, stripes, sizes, colors, different types of leather, and he's really going to explain to us the differences. He's going to sit down with our quarterbacks and really pick out what they want and what fits their needs. Super excited about it. You guys got to check it out. Uh, this is what we currently use? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's actually yeah. Different. We're going to concentrate on laces, hand, grip point, and everything. You guys kind of explained some of the things that you guys like, so I brought different options. My name is Dan Colson. I'm a representative from Big Game Football, a licensee of Nike. We're here today to get the quarterbacks here at Clemson University fitted for the proper football that they're going to use for the 2022 season and beyond. Typically what players look for in a ball, obviously, is comfortability, right? Typically what we're seeing now, specifically out of this generation of quarterbacks, is the way they grip the ball is have their middle finger right on the edge of the stripe, right up against the leg somewhere in this area their middle finger on the laces and their pinky finger right on the edge of the laces here so with this uh, if we need to do stitching along the stripe and then what the height of the laces should be if they have typically smaller hands higher the laces more of a grip point larger hands stronger hands more mature hands you typically have a lower profile lace more conducive to like a pro style lace that's out there Some of y'all may feel like this in school. Some of y'all may feel like this in your families. Some of you feel like this on, on the football field, et cetera, et cetera. Don't be afraid to show up for yourself. Keep showing up for yourself, even in injuries. You gotta show up for yourself. The injury is a period. How can you turn that into a company? Rashard Hall here, Director of Career and Professional Development with Clemson Football and Paul Journey. Man, we had the pleasure of having one of our own come back, Dante Stewart, man, husband, father, and author. Come bless our guys during our History Month, man, educating our guys on black history through narratives and story of his family and experiences he's had as a scholar athlete himself and just educating our guys on what it's like going through the roles of being black in America and what we can do to be a part of the change in our country today and some issues that we have. So did a great job of giving them practical things to be able to apply to real life and um, understand a better understanding of black history in our country. Three, two. Yo, what's up, what's up? It's Dante Stewart. Everybody calls me Stu. If we're just now meeting, I'm probably gonna say I'm Dante. Uh, so today, I was back with the team talking about, uh, uh, thinking through, you know, what can we learn from Black History Month and taking some time to pause and look again at these stories, you know, that are so critical because this month is Black History Month. Uh, we want to set aside time in this country to think particularly about black people. Uh, things like that. So I told the story of my granddaddy and I told, talked a little bit about how I learned to love and tell black stories from my granddaddy, uh, thinking about John Carlos and Tommy Smith in the 1968 Olympics, as well as James Baldwin, who is on my shirt, this incredible writer. Uh, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time together. It was a beautiful, sweet time. I just want to say thank you for someone that likes to write a lot, especially like the things that you write about, that's something that I want to do personally. And I um, just really appreciate your time and giving you know, you know, your blessings to us. And I um, just really appreciate it. And I want to thank each one of y'all, like for real, like legit. Like each one of y'all have a million things that y'all could be doing. You have, you have so much on your plate. You're busy, you have your own life. And I want to say I thank y'all. And I'm very proud of each of you. Like I, I, I think each of y'all need to hear that. 
Like, I'm very proud of each of you. Y'all just came off a hard season. Y'all are in doing school in the middle of a pandemic. Y'all, some of y'all may have lost family members, lost people that's close to you. Your homes may be in shambles. But you, each one of y'all are finding a way to show up. Don't that feel good? That you can look at yourself and say that I am showing up today. I want y'all to know I am extremely, extremely, extremely proud of y'all. For real. James Baldwin has this quote, you know, that the black people are indeed beautiful. And one of the things I hope that they really got from it uh, was that this moment that they are living in, in, in our country, uh, in college, this is a very important moment. Uh, and there are stories for us, there are people, there are places, there are things that can help us lean into this moment. And as James Baldwin said, not leave the world the same way we found it. So hopefully I think they learned something. I did uh, because talking to college athletes and students, you know, is a interesting process. I learned some, so much from their questions about what is like pressing in their lives. And I was able to kind of lean on, you know, my work in black history, my work in black literature, my work in black art to offer them some principles, some practical advice from what I've learned, what I've explored, what I've I've listened to that has helped me along the way. Uh, Mr. Stewart or Dr. Stewart, I mean, he provided a lot of knowledge that I didn't even know I was going to get coming into this meeting. You know, I was just, I wanted to be here because this is a month that, you know, a lot of a lot of people get to be appreciated for. And someone like myself, a black kid, you know, I just, I want to get all the knowledge I can about my history. And he's someone that, you know, gave me something today that I didn't have before. And especially as a, a man who's a writer and that, he writes about, you know, uh, race and religion and stuff that I want to write about. Uh, he gave me a lot of knowledge and a lot of power. And I'm just so blessed for that. And that's something that I didn't know I was going to get out of today. And, you know, I'm very blessed that I was able to be in that meeting. And, you know, that's just God putting somebody in my life that made a difference. Groovy Cam, you back.